This video will go over paragraph structure. A paragraph is a group of sentences that focuses on one point or example, except for special purpose paragraphs such as introductions and conclusions. Paragraphs develop and support an essay's main point or thesis. Aim for paragraphs that are well developed, organized, coherent, and neither too long nor too short for easy reading. A paragraph should be unified around a main point. The main point should be clear to readers, and all sentences in the paragraph should relate to it. Stating the main point in a topic sentence. As readers move into a paragraph, they need to know where they are in relation to the whole essay and what to expect in the sentences to come. A good topic sentence, a one-sentence summary of the paragraph's main point, acts as a signpost pointing in two directions backwards toward the thesis of the essay and forward toward the body of the paragraph. Usually the topic sentence highlighted in the following example comes first in the paragraph. All living creatures manage some form of communication. In college writing, topic sentences are often necessary for advancing or clarifying the lines of an argument or reporting the research in a field. In business writing, topic sentences, along with headings, are essential because readers often scan for information and summary statements. Sometimes the topic sentence is introduced by a transitional sentence linking the paragraph to earlier material, and occasionally the topic sentence is withheld until the end of the paragraph. Sticking to the point, sentences that do not support the topic sentence destroy the unity of a paragraph. If the paragraph is otherwise focused, such sentences can simply be deleted or perhaps moved elsewhere. In the following paragraph, describing the inadequate facilities in a high school, the information about the chemistry instructor highlighted is off the point. As the result of tax cuts, the educational fa facilities of Lincoln High School have reached an all-time all low. Some of the books date back to 1990 and have long since shed their covers. The few computers in working order must share one printer. The lack of lab equipment make it necessary for four or five students to work at one table, with most watching rather than performing exper experiments. Also, the chemistry teacher left to have a baby at the beginning of the semester, and most of the students don't like the substitute. As for the furniture, many of the upright chairs have become recliners and the desk legs are so unbalanced that they seesaw on the floor. Sometimes the solution for a disunified paragraph is not as simple as deleting or moving material. Writers often wander into uncharted territory because they cannot think of enough evidence to support a topic sentence. Feeling that it is too soon to break into a new paragraph, they move on to new ideas for which they have not prepared the reader. When this happens, the writer is faced with a choice. Either find more evidence to support the topic sentence or adjust the topic sentence or adjust the topic sentence to mesh with the evidence that is available. Though an occasional short paragraph is fine, particularly if it functions as a transition or emphasizes a point, a series of brief paragraphs suggests inadequate development. How much development is enough? That varies depending on the writer's purpose and audience. For example, when health columnist Jane Brody wrote a paragraph attempting to convince readers that it is impossible to lose fat quickly, she knew that she would have to present a great deal of evidence because many dieters want to believe the opposite. She did not write only the following. Underdeveloped paragraph. When you think about it, it's impossible to lose as many, it's impossible to lose as many diets suggest. 10 pounds of fat in 10 days, even a total fast. Even a moderately active person cannot lose so much weight so fast. A less active person has a prayer. This three-sentence paragraph is too skimpy to be convincing, but the paragraph that Brody did write contains enough evidence to convince even skeptical readers. Well-developed paragraph. When you think about it, it's impossible to lose, as many diets suggest, 10 pounds of fat in 10 days, even on a total fast. 
a pound of body fat represents 3,500 calories. To lose one pound of fat, you must expend 3,500 more calories than you consume. Let's say you weigh 170 pounds, and as a moderately active person, you burn 2,500 calories a day. If your diet contains only 1,500 calories, you'd have an energy deficit of 1,000 calories a day. In a week's time, that would add up to a 7,000 calorie de deficit or two pounds of real fat. In 10 days, the accumulated deficit would represent nearly three pounds of lost body fat. Even if you ate nothing at all for 10 days and maintained your usual level of activity, your caloric, your caloric deficit could add up to 25,000 calories. At 3,500 calories per pound, that's still only seven pounds of lost fat. Although paragraphs, and indeed whole essays, may be patterned in any number of ways, certain patterns of organization occur frequently, either alone or in combination. And so you have many different kinds of paragraphs. You can have an examples and illustrations paragraph, an analogy paragraph, a narration paragraph, cause and effect paragraph, a description paragraph, a classification paragraph, a process paragraph, a definition paragraph, and a com comparison contrast uh, paragraph. And these are all the same kind of patterns of organizations that you have for essays. You could have an example essay, analogy essay, narration essay, cause and effect essay, description essay, etc. So these patterns, sometimes called methods of development, have different uses depending on the writer's subject and purpose. So here we're gonna go over in this next section, different kinds of paragraphs. So first, examples and illustration paragraph. Examples, perhaps the most common method of paragraph development are appropriate whenever the reader might be tempted to ask. For example, normally my parents abided scrupulously by the budget, but several times a year, Dad would dip into his battered black strongbox and splurge on some irrational, totally satisfying luxury. Once he bought over 100 comic books at a flea market, doled out to us, thereafter at the tantalizing rate of two a week. He always got a whole flat of pansies, Mom's favorite flower, for us to give her on Mother's Day. One day, a boy stopped at our house selling 50-cent raffle tickets on a sailboat, and Dad bought every ticket the boy had left, three books worth. Illustrations are extended examples, frequently presented in story form. When well selected, they can be a vivid and effective means of developing a point. So here you have illustration paragraphs that are like extended example paragraphs. Part of Harriet Tubman's strategy of conducting was, as in all battlefield operations, the knowledge of how and when to retreat. Numerous allusions have been made to her moves when she suspected that she was in danger. When she feared the party was closely pursued, she would take it, she would take it for a time on a train southward bound. No one seeing Negroes going in this direction would, for an instant, suppose them to be fugitives. Once on her return, she was at a railroad station. She saw some men reading a poster, and she heard one of them reading it aloud. It was a description of her offering a reward for her capture. She took a southbound train to avert suspicion. And another time when Harriet heard men talking about her, she pretended to read a book which she carried. One man remarked, this can't be the woman. The one we want can't read or write. Harriet devoutly hoped the book was right side up. Earl Conrad Harriet Tubman. Then you have a narration paragraph. A paragraph of narration tells a story or part of the story. The following paragraph recounts one of the author's experience in the African wild. One evening when I was wading in the shallows of the lake to pass a rocky outcrop, crop, I suddenly stopped dead as I saw the sinuous body of a snake in the water. It was all of six feet long and from the slight hood and the dark stripes at the back of the neck, I knew it to be Storm's water cobra, a deadly reptile for the bite of which there was at that time no serum. As I stared at it, an incoming wave gently deposited part of its body on one of my feet. 
I remained motionless, not even breathing, until the wave rolled back into the lake, drawing the snake with it. Then I leaped out of the water as fast as I could, my heart hammering. Jane Goodall in the sh Shadow of Men. A descriptive essay sketches a, sketches a portrait of a person, place, or thing by using concrete and specific details that appeal to one or more of the senses, sight, sound, smell, taste, and touch. Consider, for example, the following description of the grasshopper invasions that devastated the Midwestern landscape in the late 1860s. They came like dive bombers out of the West. They came by the millions with the hustle, with the rustle of their wings ro roaring overhead. They came in waves like the rolls of the sea, descending with a terrifying speed, breaking now and again like a mighty surf. They came with the force of a willow walk, and they formed a huge, ominous, dark brown cloud that eclipsed the sun. They dipped and touched earth, hitting objects and people like hailstones. But they were not hail. They were, these were live demons. They popped, snapped, crackled, and roared. They were dark brown, an inch or longer in length, plump in the middle and tapered at the ends. They had transparent wings slender legs and two black eyes that flashed with fierce intelligence. Eugene Bow, Pioneers to Eternity. A process paragraph is, par is structured in chronological order. A writer may choose this pattern either to describe how something is made or done, to explain to readers step by step how to do something. The, the following paragraph explains how to perform a roll cast, a popular fly fishing technique. Begin by taking up a suitable stance, with one foot slightly in front of the other and the rod pointing down the line. Then begin a, a smooth, steady draw, raising your rod hand to just above the shoulder height and lifting the rod to the 10.30 or 11 o'clock position. This steady draw allows a loop of line to form between the rod top and the water. While the line is still moving, raise the rod slightly then punch it rapidly forward and down. The rod is now flexed and under maximum compression, and the line follows its path, bellowing out slightly behind you and coming off the water close to your feet. As you power the rod down through the three o'clock position, the belly of line will roll forward. Comparison and contrast. To compare two subjects is to draw attention to their similarities, Although the word compare also has a broader meaning that includes a consideration of differences, to contrast is to focus only on differences. Whether a paragraph stress similarities or differences, it may be patterned in one of two ways. The two subjects may be presented one at a time, as in the following paragraph of contrast. So, Grant and Lee were in complete contrast, representing two diametrically opposed elements in American life. Grant was the modern man emerging be beyond him, ready to come onto the stage, was the great age of steel and machinery, of crowded cities and a restless burgeoning vitality. Lee might have written down from the old age of chivalry, lance in hand, silken banner fluttering over his head. Each man was the perfect champion of his cause, drawing both his strengths and weaknesses from the people he led. Or a paragraph may proceed point by point, treating the two subjects together one aspect at a time. The following paragraph uses the point by point method to contrast speeches given by Abraham Lincoln in 1860 and Barack Obama in 2008. Two men, two speeches. The men, both lawyers, both from Illinois, were seeking the presidency. Despite what seemed a crippling connection with extremists, each was young by modern standards for a president. Abraham Lincoln had turned 51 just five days before delivering his speech. Barack Obama was 46 when he gave his. Their political experience was mainly provincial in the Illinois legislature for both of them, and they had received little exposure at the national level. Two years in the House of Representatives for Lincoln, four years in the Senate for Obama, yet each was seeking his party's nomination against a New York senator of longer standing and greater prior rep reputation. 
Lincoln against Senator William Seward, Obama against Senator Hillary Clinton. Analogies draw comparisons between items that appear to have little in common. Writers can use analogies to make something abstract or unfamiliar easier to grasp or to provoke fresh thoughts about a common subject. In the following paragraph, physician Lewis Thomas draws an analogy between the behavior of ants and that of humans. Ants are so much like human beings as to be an embarrassment. They farm fungi, raise aphids as livestock, launch armies into wars, use chemical sprays to alarm and confuse enemies, capture slaves. The families of weaver ants engage in child labor, holding their larvae like shuttles to spin out the thread that sews the leaves together for their fungus gardens. They exchange information ceaselessly, and they do everything but watch television. Cause and effect. A paragraph may move from cause to effect or from a, an effect to its causes. The topic sentence in the following se paragraph mentions an effect. The rest of the paragraph lists several causes. The fantastic water clarity of the Mount Gambier sinkholes results from several factors. The holes are fed from aquifers holding rainwater that fell decades, even centuries ago, and that has been filtered through miles of limestone. The high level of calcium that limestone adds causes the silty detritus from dead plants and animals to cling together and settle quickly to the bottom. Abundant bottom vegetation in the shallow sinkholes also helps bind the silt, and the rapid turnover of water prohibits uh, stagnation. Classification and division paragraphs. Classification is the grouping of items into categories according to some consistent principle. The following paragraph classifies species of electric fish. Scientists sort electric fish into three categories. The first comprises the strongly electric species like the marine electric rays or the freshwater African electric catfish and the South American electric eel. Known since the dawn of history, these deliver a punch strong enough to stun a human. In recent years, biologists have focused on a second category, weakly electric fish in the South American and African uh, rivers that use tiny voltages for communication and navigation. The third group contains sharks, non-electric rays, and catfish, which do not emit a field but possess sensors that enable them to detect the, minute amount, the minute amounts of electricity that leak out of other organisms. Division takes one item and divides it into parts. As with classification, division should be made according to some consistent principle. Definition. A definition puts a concept into a general class and then provides enough details to distinguish it from others in the same class. In the following paragraph, the writer defines crowdsourcing as a savvy business practice. Despite the jargony name, crowdsourcing is a very real and important business idea. Definition and terms vary, but the basic idea is to tap into the collective intelligence of the public at large to complete business-related tasks that a company would normally either perform itself or outsource to a third-party provider. Yet free labor is only a narrow part of crowdsourcing's appeal. Most importantly, it enables managers to expand the size of their talent pool while also gaining insight into what customers really want. Make paragraphs coherent. When paragraphs, sentences and paragraphs flow from one to another without bumps, gaps, or shifts, they are said to be coherent. Coherence can be improved by strengthening the ties between old information and new. Readers expect to learn a paragraph's main point in a topic sentence early in the paragraph. Then, as they move into the body of the paragraph, they expect to encounter specific details, facts, or examples that support the topic idea, either directly or indirectly. If a sentence does not support the topic sentence directly, readers expect it to support another sentence in the paragraph and therefore to support the topic sentence indirectly. The following sentence, the following paragraph begins with a topic sentence. 
the highlighted sentences are direct supports. Through the open space, though the open space classroom works for many children, it is not practical for my son David. First, David is hyperactive. Second, David has a tendency to transpose letters and numbers, a tendency that can be overcome only by individual attention from the instructor. Finally, David is not a highly motivated learner. Repeating Rep repeating keywords. Repetition of keywords is an important technique for gaining coherence. To prevent repetitions from becoming dull, you can use variations of the keyword hike, hiker, hiking, pronouns referring to the word gamblers, they, and synonyms run, spring, rash, dash. In the following paragraph describing plots among indentured servants, Richard uh, binds sentences together by repeating the word plots and echoing it with a variety of uh, synonyms. Plots, uprising, mutinous plots, behavior, plots, uprising, great rebellion, insurrection, rebellion, rise up, plunder, and riots. Using parallel structures are frequently used within sentences to underscore the similarity of ideas. They may also be used to bind together a series of sentences expressing similar information. Maintaining consistency. Coherence suffers whenever a, sh a draft shifts confusingly from one point of view to another or from one verb tense to another. In addition, coherence can suffer when new information is introduced with the subject of each sentence. Transitions are bridges between what has been read and what is about to be read. Transitions help, help readers move from sentence to sentence. Certain words and phrases signal connections between uh, sentences. Frequently used transitions are included in the chart below. So these are all examples of transitions. First of all, for example, in other, in other words, in fact, particular, and since. Paragraph level transitions usually link the first sentence of a new paragraph with the first sentence of the previous paragraph. And so here you have synthetic packaging and then you have synthetic packaging. So here you have transition uh, between and then transitions between blocks of text. You have different kinds of transition words. So if you have transition words to show addition and also besides furthermore in addition moreover next to first second you have common transitions to give examples for example for instance to illustrate in fact then you've got transitions for comparison contrast to summarize to show time to show place or direction and to indicate logical relationships so most readers feel comfortable reading paragraphs that range between 100 and 200 words. Shorter paragraphs can require too much starting and stopping, and longer ones can strain the reader's attention span. So paragraphs longer than 200 words frequently appear in scholarly writing where writers explore complex ideas. Paragraphs shorter than 100 words occur in business writing and on websites where readers routinely skim for main ideas. In newspapers, because of narrow columns and in informal essays to quicken the pace. So in an essay, the first and last paragraphs will ordinarily be the introduction and conclusion. These special purpose paragraphs are likely to be shorter than paragraphs in the body of an essay. Typically, the body paragraphs will follow the essay's outline. One paragraph per point in short uh, essays, several paragraphs per point in longer ones. Some ideas require more development than others, so it is best to be flexible. Parag paragraph breaks are not always made for logical reasons. So you begin a new paragraph to mark off the introduction and conclusion, to signal a shift to a new idea, to indicate an important shift in time or place, to emphasize a point, to highlight a contrast or to signal a change of speakers in dialogue, to provide readers with a needed pause, to break up text that looks too dense. Beware of using too many short choppy paragraphs, however. 
Readers want to see how your ideas connect, and they become irritated when you break their momentum by forcing them to pause every few sentences. Reasons for combining paragraphs to clarify the essay's organization, to connect closely related ideas, to bind together text that looks too choppy. That's it for this essay, and that's it for this video. And if you like this video, you can subscribe to Professor H Writing Channel. And if you have any questions, feel free to email me at any time.